In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the electric field produced by an infinite sheet of charge and also the electric field between uh, two parallel plates, like a parallel plate capacitor. So let's start with this problem. What is the electric field produced by an infinite sheet of charge that contains a surface charge density of positive 60 nanoclooms per, that's supposed to be square meter instead of just meters. Surface charge density is uh, equal to the total charge divided by the area. But let's continue with the problem. So how can we do this? How can we use Gauss's law to come up with a formula for the electric field produced by this uh, infinite sheet of charge? Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So let's say this is our sheet of charge and it has a positive charge distributed through its surface. And we're going to use a cylinder. Now the positive charge that is in that Gaussian cylinder is going to emit an electric field that exits the cylinder in both directions. So anytime the electric field leaves the object, it's an outward flux. So these two electric fields are outward fluxes, so they're additive. Now according to Gauss's law, the electric flux is equal to the total charge inside or enclosed by the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught. And the electric flux, you can calculate it by taking the integral of the electric field times the area or the change in area and that should equal Q over epsilon naught. Now the total electric flux is basically the sum from the right side which is uh, EA is the electric field times the area of the circle and on the left side is also uh, EA. So we have EA plus EA which is equal to Q over epsilon sub naught. Now from this equation, let's solve for Q. If we multiply both sides by A, we can see that the total charge is equal to sigma, the surface charge density, times the area. So now let's go ahead and replace Q with sigma times A. On the left side we have EA plus EA, which is equal to 2EA and Q is equal to sigma times A divided by epsilon sub naught. So now we can divide both sides by A. And let's also multiply both sides by 1 over 2. A half times 2 is a whole. So on the left side all we have is E, the electric field, and it's equal to uh, the surface charge density sigma divided by 2 epsilon sub naught. So this is the equation that you can use to calculate the electric field produced by an infinite sheet of charge. Notice that because the charge, because the sheet is so large, it's independent, the electric field is independent of the distance um, between a point and the sheet of charge because the, the sheet of charge is so large. So it doesn't depend on the distance. All it depends on is the surface charge density. So now let's finish the problem. So we have the surface charge density of 60 nanoclooms, which is 60 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per square meter, divided by 2 times epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. The units for epsilon sub naught is coulombs squared divided by newtons times square meters. But let's go ahead and put this in a calculator and see what the answer is. So 60 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 2, and then take that result divided by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. The answer that I got is 3,390 newtons per coulomb. So this is the electric field produced 
by this infinite sheet of charge. Here's another problem that we could try. What is the electric field produced between two oppositely charged sheets with a surface charge density of 15 microcoulombs per square meter? So this time I remember to put the square meter unit. So what can we do here? Well, first, let's begin by drawing a picture. So on one side, we're going to have a positive charge on this plate. And on the other side, it's going to be a negatively charged. Now we know the electric field extends from the positive plate towards the negative plate. So it's in this direction. By the way, what is the electric field outside of the plates? Let's say in this region and in this region. Let's call this uh, Q1 and Q2. The electric field produced by Q1 on the left side is directed towards the left side. It's directed away from the positive charge. The electric field produced by the negatively charged plate is directed towards it. So notice that the electric field outside of the plates basically cancels. It's almost zero. So the electric field on the outside is negligible. Now granted, E1 is stronger than E2, but if these plates are sufficiently large enough, the distance doesn't matter, as we've seen in the last example, if we have an infinite uh, sheet of charge. So now, let's focus only on the electric field inside or in between the two oppositely charged sheets or parallel plates. This is the situation of a capacitor. So let's draw a Gaussian surface. And it's going to be an electric field that passes through only this side of the surface. And of course, that surface is going to have an area A. You can use a cylinder or something else. but the flux through that surface area, through this A value, is just E times A. We don't have an electric field that goes on the outside. Keep in mind, this electric field is the combination of the effects of Q1 and Q2. The electric field on the outside, the net effect is approximately zero. So we don't have to worry about the electric field on the left side, since it's virtually non-existent. Therefore, using Gauss's law, we can see that the electric flux is simply E times A and not EA plus EA. So it's 1 EA and not 2 EA. Now Q, the total charge, is still going to be the surface charge density times A, just like last time. And epsilon sub naught will remain the same. So we can cancel A, and then this will give us the electric field between two oppositely charged sheets. So the electric field is simply the ratio between the surface charge density sigma divided by epsilon sub naught. So as you can see, it's not very difficult to derive the formula for this electric field using Gauss's law. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get the final answer. So the surface charge density is 15 microcoulombs, or 15 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter. And we're going to divide it by epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. So the answer is about 1.69 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So that is the electric field in between this parallel plate capacitor. So the equation is just uh, sigma divided by epsilon sub naught. Now, if you want to get the electric field in terms of the area of the surface or the area of the, the plates, keep in mind sigma is Q divided by A. 
So we can describe the electric field as being the charge divided by epsilon sub naught times A. You can also uh, write it this way if you know the total charge on the surface. If you don't know it and you need to find it, just remember Q is equal to sigma times A. So if you multiply the surface charge density by the area of the plates, then you can get the total charge on that plate.